Father God, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for your word that's about ready to come forth. We ask that you uh, increase every person that's in here. Bless them with the desires of their heart. As we bring this word today, let it be edifying, establishing, building, and guiding the men and women of God. We ask these things in your mighty name. And let your servant be amen. Amen, that you may increase. In Jesus' name, let the house say amen. Amen. All right, y'all. How y'all doing? I've been missing for about three weeks. So I'm, ready to come out. I'm a little antsy and a little ready. A little rusty. But we're going to pick up where we left off. Who is here for the uh, Park of Integrity? Hey, Amen. And I didn't really get it completed, so I'm going to try and finish it up a little bit. Give me a little bit more to add to it. So we may go long, we may go short, but y'all know me. Ain't no such thing anymore. Just saying. So let's go to Luke chapter 12. Let's do a recap. Every good teacher always reviews what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Because we know integrity is one of the key things to Christianity. And uh, I think we need to talk about that some more. So, let's look at Luke 12, starting at verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they tried one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And we talked about that leaven. Unleavened bread is no sin, and leavened bread is sin. Why? Because unleavened bread has no yeast in it. It's a cracker. That's the body of Jesus. Leavened bread has yeast in it. That's why we eat it with salt and plus salt. So that's the difference between leaven and unleavened. Sin and no sin. Verse 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, Neither hid that shall not be known. All truth is going to come out. Amen. Whether you like it or not, even in your death, the truth about you is going to come out. I learned more about my father than he was dead than when he was alive. That's how I found out it was 25 of them. <laughs> and I'm an only child. Now you count that one. <laughs> so, but, but verse 3. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be what? Heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the roof of the housetops. I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that, that kill the body. And after that have no more that they can do. For I forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he is killed has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say unto you, fear him. Amen. Amen. Go to uh, Matthew, chapter 5. We're just going to recap the scriptures. We catch up a little bit. Matthew, chapter 5, we're talking about verses 22 to 25. And it says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother or sister, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say, to his brother Reka, and we talked about what Reka means. That's a Aramaic word that means empty-headed or worthless. So if you tell your brother, you know, you're empty-headed or worthless, Jesus said, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. And we said, if you call somebody a fool, you say they lack intellect. So you ain't supposed to say it to your brother or sister, you fool, or you empty-headed. You're not supposed to do that. But then we saw that Jesus even called the Pharisees for us. And again, how is that? A lot of the disciples and the apostles couldn't even read or write. Were they foolish? But those who were in seminary school saw them when they were preaching and said, you know what? They're unlearned and ignorant. But guess what? We know they have been with Jesus. Amen? So, come on now. If you've been with Jesus, ain't no way in the world you're a fool. Amen? Because he even said, the only ones who are fools are those who said there is no God. Hello. Hello. Let's keep reading. Verse 23. Therefore, if you bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thou has, uh, that thy brother has an up against you, if you bring your gift to God and remember you got a problem with your brother or sister, had an issue with your brother or sister, verse 24, Jesus said this, leave there your gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled. First get it right. First, go get it together with your brother or sister. Then, <laughs> then come and offer your gift. Amen. But don't bring me nothing if you ain't apologized. Don't bring me nothing if you haven't had any integrity. Don't bring me nothing if you've been lying to me. Don't bring me nothing if there ain't no truth in you. 
Amen. That's what God is saying. Right. Don't come to me with that crap. You may not even be honest with your brother and sister. Amen. Go get it right first. Amen. Verse 25. Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Amen. 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 And then we talked about in Proverbs, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Only one who knows your heart is God. I don't know your heart. You know, we always talk about this, man, I gave you my word, I did this. There ain't no promise you have to keep in this earth except for the one you made to God. That's why marriage vows are so important. But if you make a vow unto God, you better keep it. That's what he said, you're the light and fool. But I can promise you something today, and God will tell me, don't do it. Then I'll come to you and say, brother, I ain't doing it. Man, you give me your work. So, <laughs> that means me. God said, don't do it. Plus, I ain't going to help you sin. Amen. If it leads to your death, that promise should be broken. Amen. I'm not going to help you die. It's just that simple. Amen? Amen. All right. Integrity means this. According to the world, integrity is moral uprightness or sound moral principles. Honesty. To be honest. It means doing the right thing before God and the world. And that means even when you're doing something wrong, even when you made a mistake and you did it wrong, you know, we all say, what me? And that's pride. It wasn't me. And I think we talked about, you know, people when they get locked up, they put you in interrogation and put you next to that pole and the room is cold and you sweat the ash and then you do it. Man, I ain't no rat, I ain't no rat. Eight hours later, yeah, man, I'll take it. Your family members need to see integrity. Your friends, your co-workers need to see integrity. They don't need to see you stealing the staples and stealing you know, the paper and all that stuff. Um, they, they can own it. Or the highlighters. Come on. They don't need, that's not integrity. All right? They don't need to see that. If they see you doing it, then they say it's okay. Mm. Mm. Amen. The thing that really wins people to the Lord is when you decide to, to do the right thing in front of them. That's what separates us from the world. That's what separates us from the world as Christians, y'all. Amen? Amen? What separates us from the world is our lifestyle, how we handle things. You can live by a set of rules, but nobody's life has changed. If you are here with the Bible, how many of you are here with the Bible? Amen. If you are here with the Bible and that Bible has not affected your behavior, you are no different than the world. I see a lot of people walk around their Bibles. I see a lot of people know the Bible from one end of the cover to the next. But they have no clue what God really is saying. They know the history. They know the wisdom. They know the poetry. They know the doctrine. But their heart is not with God. So I know it from the beginning. Amen. I don't know all that stuff. All I know is God gave me a gift to teach people how to get out of their addiction, out of their issues. Because I had every one of them. That's why I say the word of correction. Amen. I look at the Jesus that wishes to tell. I look at the Jesus that says, if you throw money at my feet, I'm going to bless you. Amen. Jesus already said, you got it all. Obey me. And if you don't, I'm going to whip your tail. Right. I'm just making it plain. And then if he's whipping your tail, you ought to be happy about that. Why? Amen. 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 The scripture says you're not Amen. Amen. You're not illegitimate. I'd rather have God with you than the hell. Come on. Amen. 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 All right. When God saves us, he saves us so that he may change our behavior. Amen. So if you've got a Bible, your behavior isn't changing. Amen. Amen. So let's go down to what we were looking at before. We looked at common phrases for integrity as holiness, uprightness, and truth. We talked about holiness, be holy for I am holy. We talked about honesty. Boy, did we talk about honesty. Yeah. Uh, one who is free from lying, cheating, and stealing, or impure motives. Then we talked about lying in detail. Hmm. Boy, did we talk about lying in detail. When we lie, we show the world that we cannot be trusted hmm. because of the falsehood that comes out of our souls. Hmm. 
You can't walk in integrity and be false in your speech. Man, I love Jesus. Pass me, give me five bottles. Give me five bottles. Man, I love Jesus. Hey, man, can I get two bottles of crap? Man, I love Jesus. Give me a half an ounce of weed, man, so I can go up here and shut myself in. Man, I love Jesus. Baby, you want to sleep with me tonight? <laughs> Come on, I'm just keeping you here. But you love Jesus. He says, I come as a people tonight and you need to crack the cloud to show up while you were doing that. Guess what you want me? Stuck right here. Amen. So I, I question you. Amen. Then we talked about cheating. To deal with some deceitfully to obtain what you want. As a matter of fact, let's go there. That's where we left off with the cheat. Matter of fact, before we go there, go to Revelation 21. Go to Revelation 21. Because I showed y'all something in that that blew my mind too. So let's go. Revelation 21. So I look at verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and I watch this one and all lies that yeah. one who just tells a little white lie all lies not mm. one who hold back the truth all lies and my understanding when I look at the meaning of all all means all alright all lies shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the what? Second death. 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 But go back up to that one that says sorcerers, and we discussed sorcerers. Okay. It was the Greek word pharmaceutical. Yes. Okay. And what word do we hear in there? Pharmaceutical. Yes. So in that scripture, that means drug usage. Yep. Those who sell or use drugs. It ain't no hocus pocus made of a locust. It's you who are who are intaking substances. They had a bunch of drug dealers and drug users in the Bible. Matter of fact, one of them's name was Bar Jesus. Hello. There were three Jesus in the Bible. Justice, which was called Jesus, Jesus Christ, and Bar Jesus, who was a sorcerer. He sold drugs. Hello. But at least he gave his life to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's look at cheating. <laughs> Uh, to deal with someone deceitfully to obtain what you want. Go to Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. The Lord wouldn't let me off of this. I actually had a different message I wanted to bring, but I felt like I didn't complete last week when I was getting ready to switch it up. I said, they don't remember, Lord. See, I don't even They didn't care what I was talking about. They don't want to tell you. Can I be honest here? The Lord said, there's somebody who heard you. Amen. 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 There's somebody who needed to understand how much truth is in my word. Amen. They've been walking in deceit and being deceived all their life. They actually know, they actually believe that their lifestyle is full of deceit. Because they're from the hood. They're from the streets. They're from a place where ain't nothing but deceit. They have been told, no snitch. All they're telling you by saying no snitch is lie. Amen. You saw a truth and you held it. It told you to lie. Amen. Leviticus 19. Let me get there too. Look at verse 11. Leviticus 19 11. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie. Another. You know how you be sitting with some people and you tell a story, you know what I mean? They always got a greater story than yours. No matter what you say, their story is greater than yours. You know? Yo, man, I flew from here to England in one day and back. Well, I flew from here to the moon and back. See, they got to be greater than you no matter what. But then I always ask a question because I hear it around here before too. And my mind goes like this, well, why are you here? If you're that great, why are you here? When I was here, no one respected me. You know why? They didn't see me as pastor, minister. 
or a person who walked in the ways of God? You know why? Because I was in the same condition. How can I receive from you when you're in the same condition? But the moment they see and heard my vision and seen it come to pass, because I said, in two months, I'll be out of here. I'll have a job. And in one year, I'll be married. Because me and my wife were going to do it right. We weren't going to fornicate. We were going to consummate that marriage. And I lived celibate for seven years. Well, brother, you lie. That's but when they see the truth in what you said, right. and they watch the integrity come out of you, I'm not for me in front of people. They saw my thoughts. Yes. Amen. Amen. So when you got a vision, don't lie. Speak it into existence Amen. and go do it. Because the more you talk, the more people will look at you to see whether or not the evidence is going to play. What's on the record going to play? Or you just got to give the gap. Mm -hmm. Sound good, but ain't nothing moving. I'd rather have you shove and move than to talk and don't move. Amen. Amen. It's just the truth anyway. So we saw what God said, Blessed, don't deceive or steal or lie from one another. What, what gain are you going to get from that? Amen. All right, the other thing about integrity is truth. That which is reliable can be trusted. <laughs> Amen. I had to look at that one again. That which is reliable can be trusted. Truth is correct knowledge and doctrine. Mm -hmm. When you're walking in truth, you got correct knowledge and doctrine. This is the greatest truth I've ever received in my life. Amen. Amen. You know what I mean? I couldn't read a novel. I didn't learn how to read until I was 33. I mean, really read. I can still pick up a book today and still cannot comprehend it to save my life. But I'll pick up this and it's like music to my ears. Amen. 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 At 33. Yeah, and I still have a struggle, but guess what? I ain't embarrassed. Right. I mispronounce a word, but I say, God, you know what the word is. <laughs> Ron, what was that word you called? Yeah. I don't see it right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, we must walk in truth. What's our favorite scripture for that? Let's go to uh, John 1 first. John chapter 1. We need to look at something, because in Genesis was the beginning of what? Creation. And then John was the beginning of what? New creation. Oh, ain't y'all happy to be a new creation? Amen. Amen. Ooh, because in Genesis, you, there was a law laid down in you. In John, grace came unto you. Yes. <laughs> That's Amen. why integrity should be one of the key things you should be striving for. Not the, now I'm telling you, if you walk in integrity and truth, you will get blessed. Amen. But no integrity, no blessing. No blessing at all. When you walk in integrity, favor follows you. Yes, Amen. 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 John 1. Let's look at uh, verses 14 to 17. And it says, And the world was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We're going to come back to that. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Look at that. Well, I just saw some word in there. Amen. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by whom? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Now, let me give you a real definition of grace. I used to love grace. Until I would read a, a version of the Bible called the Amplified Bible, they would always say grace meant God's unmerited favor. Grace doesn't mean God's unmerited favor. For us, it may mean God's unmerited favor. You know why? Because you have had to have sinned to have unmerited favor. Amen? Amen. But I asked the person, I said, did Jesus have unmerited favor? They said, yes. I said, no, he didn't. Because if he did, he would have to have sinned. There was no sin in Jesus. Amen. So what does grace really mean? Grace means this. God's empowering presence mm. to do his will and purpose for your life. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. Grace right. means God's empowering presence yeah. to do his will yeah. and purpose for your life. Now watch this. Now if I were to read this, Jesus was full of uh, unmerited favor and truth. Did that sound right? Mm -hmm. But if I was to read Jesus was full of un God's empowering presence and truth, that takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wow! So, you who are born again got grace. Amen. You who are not born again got mercy. Yeah. And mercy won't run out. Yeah. I get letters every time I say this. Right. You know why? Because when I mess up, I got God's grace to carry me through. Yeah. Amen. When
When you mess up, you still got a, something written in the book that says you're going to hell because you didn't confess it, you didn't repent. And that's got stuck. The whole point is, Mormons, oh, I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> Confucius. <laughs> Astrologers. You know why? They got mercy because Jesus didn't show up yet. Because once he shows up, mercy runs out. But guess what we got when we accept it? Grace. He's a private president. Because when you die, you took our sins what? Past, present, and future. Hello, Grace. But it still takes a consciousness of you to forgive me, Lord. It still takes a consciousness of you to have enough maternity to say, I was wrong. I mean, with an honest heart, not a religious heart. Most folks, when they know they hurt you, they come in and say, man, forgive me. God wanted to see if you were going to walk in. You know how many people I had to walk up to and say, forgive me, and I ain't done nothing to them? And God would say, go ask them for forgiveness. I ain't did nothing to them. Amen. <laughs> we were arguing, brother. I ain't did nothing to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, they need to come to me. Guys, <laughs> 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 Bring her some medicine. Let her stay in the bed. Do the dishes. Do that. That's right. The reason why I can say that is because I've done it all week. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It was the greatest feeling I've ever had. See, God was releasing me. I just thought I'd put that in. Amen. Go to John 832. God's grace is awesome. But you gotta be have enough integrity to understand it. If you're walking around with God's empowering presence in you, people ought to be able to see that through what? The truth that is in you through integrity. But if they see you always manipulating and don't want you to come to their house, they see you on the crack corner, they see you at the bar or the place where you can buy liquor, you know what I mean? Now watch this. Again, the amazing thing, I think I've been talking about this for about five years, how prescription drugs are worse than crack, heroin, marijuana, It's such a mess because they have saw these doctors as their gods and they don't think they got a problem. Right. Now, Michael Jackson, Whitney, and all these other people are dying from prescription drugs. <laughs> because they don't believe it's wrong. Don't get me wrong. I do believe there are some drugs from day them guys, especially if you're not even a professor and you need some help. <laughs> or if you got prostate issues like me, if you got, you know, high blood pressure, come on, take it. Yeah. I would take that too. But all this painkillers and all this other stuff, there are countries who are making this stuff counterfeit, and y'all run into the dollar store buying it. Yes. See, y'all don't watch enough educational television to realize even pharmaceutical companies are standing at the border saying they're making this so great that the only way we can tell this phony is through a microscope. Mm. So why do you think that stuff is so cheap at these stores? Because it ain't real. Mm. They even discovered now with the pressing drugs that they would give one person a sugar pill, or what they call placebo, yeah. and the other person a real thing, and guess what happened? The same effect. The same effect. The same effect. Yeah. That person, because they thought they took it. Yes. Now they eat the pressing one. Yeah. It's not like all they needed was some joy. Amen. I got my depression medicine. They even did a little thing, a woman, they did a surgery for the knee. Arthritis. So they did one real surgery, and they made the person believe that they did the surgery, cut the knee open, and just closed it back up, and that person started walking normal. <laughs> All in the head. All in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what they told me? There need to be a transforming of the mind again. Yes, yes. Don't get me wrong, there's still some certain things coming oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But if your mind is renewed, 
That's why God said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transform. Metamorphosis. What do you hear there? What does a caterpillar do? Wrap itself in the cocoon, then come out. Yeah. 